Hey class, this is the first video for our bonding unit. We're going to talk about monatomic ions first. Monatomic meaning one atom. And then of course ions is an atom that's charged. So let's look at a few examples here. This first page tells us which groups lose and which groups gain electrons. And this can be found on Canvas. If you look, it says there's a very good resource for any type of ionic bonding information. You'll see this, this worksheet or these notes on Canvas. So for metals, they're going to lose electrons and become positive ions. So things like sodium, lithium, potassium, those lose one electron. Magnesium, calcium, barium, those are going to lose two. And then aluminum is going to lose three. And then when you flip to the other side of the table and go to your non-metals, they're going to gain electrons to form ions. Nitrogen, phosphorus, they're going to gain three. Oxygen, sulfur is going to gain two. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, those are going to gain one. And then noble gases, remember, do not react because they already have a, val a full valence shell. There's no point in adding or losing electrons. So let's see how this works. Sodium. To fill out this table, we're going to get the element symbol, the ion name, and then the ion formula. Element symbol for sodium, we should all know that by now. In a ion name, it's a metal. So metals form cations. And with cations, all you do, take the metal and add the word ion to the end of it. Sodium ion. And then for the formula, we're just going to write the symbol in a and then we're going to write its oxidation number as a superscript. It's in the first group, so it's going to lose one electron and have one more proton than it does electron. So it's going to become a one positive, or we don't even have to write the one. We can just say positive. Anytime you see just a plus sign or just a negative sign, that's a one. Just like we assume if there's no, no subscript, that's a one as well. Okay, let's look at a different one. Magnesium. Magnesium symbol is Mg. To write its ion name, we're just going to say magnesium ion. And then for its formula, Right, it's symbol Mg. It's in the second family, alkaline earth metals. It's going to lose two valence electrons and then have a full shell. So it's going to be a two plus ion. So one plus, two plus, they're both cations. All we have to do is add the word ion after the name of the metal. Let's look at some uh, non-metals. Uh, first up, bromine. Bromine symbol is Br. Now, we're not going to write bromine ion because this is a nonmetal. We're going to change the ending a little bit. So instead of bromine, we're going to write bromide with the ending of ide in place of ine. The formula is the same as a cation. Write the symbol, Br. Bromine's in group 7A. So in 7A, we have seven valence electrons. We need to get one more. If we gain one more, we have one more electron than we do protons. And in this case, it's going to become a negative one ion. All right. Check out oxygen. Hopefully we all know oxygen symbol by now. 
Oxygen's ion name, a little bit tricky. It's ox -ide. oxide. We take off the egen. And then for its ion formula, we're going to say O. Oh, oxygen's in group 6A. Group 6A needs to gain two electrons. Once it does, it has a full valence shell. And then it's a happy atom. So once it gains two, it's going to be a two negative anion. What about neon? Neon symbol is NE. What group number is neon? It's in group 8A, the noble gases. So for ion name or ion formula, doesn't exist. Neon's not going to form an ion, nor are any of the other noble gases. Okay, let's look at something a little bit different. Let's look at two elements. This first part, we're going to look at getting the formulas for binary ionic compounds. Again, binary just means two elements. One, two. Two simple elements, no complexity. Now, the technique for this is in your notes. It's called crisscross applesauce. The first step, write down both of the elements' formulas. For sodium bromide, we've got sodium and bromine. After you've written their, their uh, symbols, write down their oxidation numbers as a superscript. Sodium, it's in group one, it's going to lose one electron, going to become a one plus. And in this situation, I'm going to write the one simply to make it easier to understand. Bromine is in group 7a, it's going to gain one electron and become a one minus. This is where the crisscross comes in. Crisscross applesauce. You're going to take this superscript and move it to that subscript, and then same with this. Don't worry about the charges. You don't put those as subscripts. So then you would just write your compound Na1Br1. But we know we don't technically need those ones. So we can just say NaBr. That's about as simple as it gets when it comes to a binary ionic compound. Let's look at uh, calcium chloride. Calcium is in group two. So it's going to lose two electrons. If it loses two, it now has two more positive charges than it does negatives, so it's a two plus. Chlorine is in bromine's family, so Cl, one minus. Now we're gonna crisscross applesauce. One goes to here, two goes to there, and then we're gonna write our formula. Ca, one, we don't have to write Cl2. Calcium chloride. Now to check yourself, you have to have a zero net charge for these uh, ionic compounds. So calcium's a plus two. We've got one of them. So our total charge for this side is plus two. Chlorine is a minus one, but we've got two of them. Two times minus one, minus two. And then plus two and negative two cancel each other out. So that's good. We have to have a zero charge. If you don't have a zero charge, you messed up somewhere. Let's look at a fun one here. Aluminum. Aluminum oxide. Aluminum's in boron's group, and that group is going to gain three electrons. 
because it has five, it's still a little bit easier to get to eight than it is to lose those five. So it's going to gain three. Aluminum or aluminium if you're in Great Britain. Three plus. Oxygen. It's going to be in group 6A. It's going to gain two electrons to get its octet. Two negative. Now we crisscross, two goes to here, three goes to there. And again, you don't worry about the charges after you crisscross. Only worry about the charges when you're putting the oxidation numbers. So Al2 O3. Double check yourself. Aluminum is a plus three. We have two of them. That's plus six. Oxygen is a negative two. We have three. So negative two times three is negative six. Both of those cancel out. And we're good to go. Okay, let's try another one here. Cesium nitride. We kind of leave cesium out. He doesn't get used much down the bottom left-hand side of the table. Cesium symbol is CS. Nitrogen is an N. Cesium's in group one, so it's just gonna be a one plus. Nitrogen, however, is in group five. Group five has five valence, and it wants to gain three. It's easier to gain three than it is to lose five. So we're gonna gain three and become a three negative anion. Crisscross applesauce. Go over here, we got CS3 N1. Don't have to write that one. Cesium nitride. Okay, one more here, barium oxide. Barium is BA. Oxygen, we already had. O, and it's a negative 2. Barium is in the alkaline earth metals group, group number 2, so it's going to lose 2 electrons. Now that you've gotten those written out, you crisscross. That was a horrible arrow. Go over here and we've got BA2 O2. Now by now, does anyone see a problem with that? We're lazy. We don't ever want to write anything we don't have to. BA2 O2 is the exact same thing as BA O. So if you can reduce the subscripts, reduce them. Don't reduce until you've crisscrossed. I hope this makes sense. This will make a lot, uh, the next few parts a lot easier when you understand the basics of formulating compounds. Because when we move to transition metals and uh, polyatomic ions, it's a little bit more thinking involved. But if you've got this down so far, that's good. Naming compounds tends to be the more favored by students every year. Let's look at that real quick. All right, so it gives us the formula and it wants to know the name. No need for symbols, no need for oxidation numbers. You go through, you write down every metal, just like it is on the periodic table. Potassium. Uh, aluminum. Sodium. Barium, uh, 
strontium. We'll stop at that point. Pretty much self-explanatory. The only thing you have to think about is changing the non-metal, like we did at the beginning, to end in IDE. So potassium, this is oxygen oxide. Aluminum, this is chlorine. Chlorine becomes chloride. Sodium, this is nitrogen. Nitrogen becomes nitride. Barium, P is phosphorus. So we have phosphide. And then strontium, F is fluorine. This is that stuff you want in your uh, toothpaste. Fluoride. So naming binary compounds doesn't ever present problems for students. You look at the compound, write down the name of the metal exactly as it is on the periodic table, write down the name of the non-metal except change the ending to IDE. And that signifies that that particular substance is a compound and this is the negative portion of that compound. So you can look at the rest of these, sodium chloride, cesium sulfide, Lithium fluoride, calcium bromide, and then, oh, I should have done this one. This is an interesting one. Magnesium, just like it is on the table. And then this is iodine. But instead of iodine, we say iodide. Kind of a weird word. Again, let me know if this presents problems because you need to have a grasp on this as well as writing the formulas in order to be successful at the next two to three to four levels of ionic bonding.